Thank you, Harry. Good afternoon. Um, we'll try to be brief and, and move this along slightly. Um, I've been around the ticketing industry, event ticketing industry, for a dozen, 13 years now. I originally moved to London 11 years ago to run Ticketmaster's European online business. And the ticketing industry is, um, is a little bit of a convoluted value chain. There's a, there's a convoluted back end, and it's been beset by people, uh, artists, promoters, agents, all trying to get the slice of the pie from one another rather than people thinking about growing the pie. There's a great story which I'll tell now and I'll, I'll apologize in advance if anyone here has heard the story already. Number one and number two, I'm gonna name drop in the story and, and so you'll be ready for that. When I was at Ticketmaster, there was a guy named Fred Rosen who was the founder of Ticketmaster who ran the company and Fred got a call one day from the manager of Aerosmith. And the manager of Aerosmith said, Fred, we've got a problem. The band's going out on tour next year and they're very upset because on the last tour, you charged $2 booking fee for each ticket. And it really alienated the band's fans. And they don't like it. And so, you know, on this next tour, we're not going to use Ticketmaster. And Fred thought for a minute and he, he said, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I get it, I get it. So here's what we'll do. On the next tour, we'll charge a $3 booking fee and we'll give the band $1.50. And the band's manager said, Fred, I knew you would understand. We'll see you on the road. <laughs> and that's how this industry is. So everyone is working to effectively fleece the end consumer. So when we started this business four years ago, well, what did we want to do? We wanted to, number one, protect consumers, right? Everyone's experience of the secondary market is this. You're going into a parking lot with a wad of bills, right? and you've got a 20 stone guy standing there that you're gonna hand the bills to for some tickets and you're hoping they're real and you're hoping that, you, that you're gonna get in and it's a terrible consumer experience, right? Or you're on eBay or Gumtree and again, you're sending money over and you're hoping that, that you're gonna get what you're paying for. So number one, we wanted peace of mind. We wanna protect consumers, right? Number two, we wanna give people choice and optionality around their, their entertainment experience and I, I think we probably all who go to events have had the experience where Tickets for a band goes on sale nine months before the concert, and you have to decide nine months ahead of time whether you want to go some Saturday in, in August of next year, right? So you can give people optionality. You can buy now and choose to sell. If you don't want to go, you can wait and buy later and potentially pay a premium for, for your time, right? The third thing is really how do we drive price to a rational place? Because the other thing that, that the market saw for a very long time was you'd see an ad in the paper for Madonna tickets, and you'd call up, and the guy on the other end of the phone would say, yep, they're great, they're in the third row. The last two, guy just rang me up and said he's coming down to get them, so if you get here first, you can have them, and they're 400 quid each. Right? There's no price discovery. So those are the three things that we started the business with four years ago. They're the three things that we care about today more than anything else, and hopefully, if I talk to any of you two or three years from now, it's absolutely what we're focused on then, because there's real value for consumers there, and this is what we do. The, there was a report out two years ago about the size of the secondary market, and I'll, I'll get into this quickly, because I don't want to go too far into it, but the secondary market in terms of value is worth about 25% of the U.S. primary ticketing market in terms of value and it is expected that there are no structural barriers that will prevent it from getting to 25% of the Western European sized primary market in terms of value. The big issue is around channel shift. Even today, well in 2009, only 37% of concert tickets in the primary market in Germany were sold online. 63% sold offline. It's staggering that in this day and age we're still seeing sub 50% penetration for what is effectively a barcode. Right? So there's a huge channel shift going on. We do the three things that we talked about as a business. In the midst of this channel shift, we think that there's a lot of growth ahead of the industry. So how does our business work? Very, very briefly. Sellers come on the site. They can list their tickets for free. No charge for listing, right? We then have all of the tickets aggregated in a platform, and we act as the marketer for that marketplace, for that exchange. Buyers come on and buy those tickets. We collect the money from buyers. And we manage the logistics process to get the tickets from a seller to a buyer. Now, that's 
seems like a very easy thing to do, but you've got people who you don't know and you're dealing with tens of thousands of transactions in a very short period of time and moving those tickets from point A to B, point B and making sure they arrive, it's a lot of heavy lifting. And this is one of the themes of our business is we get good at doing the stuff that no one else wants to do, right? And we find ways to scale doing the hard stuff that no one else wants to do and this becomes a real advantage if you do this well. Then finally, when the tickets arrive, we pay the seller. We charge a 15% commission to the buyer, we take a 10% commission from the seller, and we sit in the middle of that transaction. Quickly on the on kind of the economics and, and, the, and the makeup of, of our sellers, um, we've got large brokers who are, who are people are taking vast amounts of supply and inventory selling tickets professionally. We've got consumer sellers, and then we've got event organizers who are trying to yield, manage, and sell unsold inventory as well within our exchange. The real liquidity comes from regular consumer sellers because they are not price maximizers. And you can see percentage of listings and percentage of sales, they drive competition in our marketplace. So the more average folks we get coming in who want to sell two tickets for an event they can't go to, the more we force the rest of the market to compete with them on price. The further we can drive price down, the more liquidity we have. And this is, there, there's a great consumer behavior here because our consumer sellers come on and list a ticket for sale. If they sell a ticket in their first, the first time they list, they are then going to list another four times in a year which is gonna be another 12 tickets, and they will sell eight of those 12 tickets. And that will be worth 1,840 euros in terms of lifetime value for a seller, right? So there's huge leverage within this model. Um, on the buying side, again, it's about knocking down barriers, right? As we knock down barriers in this industry one by one, we drive conversion rate higher and higher. So the first question people have when I introduce myself and tell them what I do, they say, well, that's not legal, is it, right? I always love getting that question. That's not legal. Um, it is legal. You can resell tickets. You can't resell tickets for certain sectors and certain categories, but you can resell tickets. And we are legitimizing this activity more and more every day. And the more we legitimize this activity, the more we bring new consumers into this marketplace. Right? People we've never seen before coming into the secondary market who would never go into a car park with a water bills, who would never go onto eBay or Gumtree with someone they don't know are coming into the secondary market now as consumers, right? On the seller side, much easier. Will I get paid? Do I have to answer 25 emails from people who wanna know if I can ship the tickets to the Czech Republic? All these other things, right? We just take that stuff out of, the, out of the picture. Very quickly on pricing, since we started, this is really important for us. The average makeup, the average markup of a ticket above face value in the sports category has gone from 1.6 to 1.15. So our customers are saving millions of euros every year because we continue to drive pricing further and further towards a rational price in this marketplace. And it's something that, again, we'll continue to do, right? So how's the world changing for us? World's changing for us, and I think it's similar to the way it's changing for a lot of people in e-commerce, right? Um, number one reason why people don't go to events is because they don't know they're happening, right? So now we have ways of having friends tell each other about events that are happening. Right, we've got Facebook and Twitter and other forms of social media in which you can tell your friends about events you want to go to, and it's very easy to do. It sounds like a very simple thing. If anyone is a regular buyer of tickets, you know that you get an email every Friday from every ticketing company, right, once you go to the events, and, it, and after a while it just becomes kind of water on your brain, you don't pay attention to it, but you get a message from a friend who says, hey, this event is interesting, it changes it, right? Um, the other thing that, that is kind of dynamic here is that we get a halo effect from the artists themselves. Nobody's buying tickets from me because I'm great, right? They want to see Lady Gaga, right? And so that becomes both a challenge and an opportunity for us in being connected to that content. And then finally, this is back to the pricing question, right? So JLS, who's one of the hottest boy bands here in the UK, right, selling below face value at the O2 Arena, biggest arena in the world, because over time we're able to drive greater and greater liquidity into that marketplace, right? So things that people thought were premium content, that remained premium content, were able to deliver at great prices because of the power of this marketplace. So again, bigger shifts on, on the macro scale that are happening, 
right? Consumers are moving more and more to, to non-fixed devices. We all know this. It's going to change all of our businesses. People are using social media to search their lives rather than just Google to search the web. It's changing the way they behave, and we all have to react to this. And then finally, you know, consumers really care more and more every day about who you are as a company and what you do. So in addition, we, we run charity auctions for a number of charities. Um, we, we ran a charity auction for the Led Zeppelin reunion, for the ABC Trust. We did a charity auction for Coldplay last year for MenCap Little Noise Sessions. So again, it's something that connects us to the content and it connects us to our customers in a different way. Um, so it, again, very simple business for us. We're trying to build a very high volume platform in, in an area that has hugely em high emotions with consumers, right? Our goal is to have consumers on the buy and the sell side over time who trust this platform and connect us with, with entertainment content, right? The three things I talked about at the beginning, again, price discovery, getting this business off the street, both in customers' minds and in, in behavior, and really delivering peace of mind. And then finally, you know, you don't need to go on to too many rating sites to see that ticketing companies don't have great reputations with customers. And it's up to us in terms of what we do, but there's a real opportunity to build a huge brand of trust in this space. So hopefully a brief, not too long story about our business. Um, thank you very much for your time.